Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, and we are excited to uh, have you guys today. Uh, just want to take a couple of minutes uh, and go over uh, just kind of how, how things are going to go down here in a second. I'm going to pass this off to Javier Elizalde, uh, our lead sales over at uh, over Clip. Uh, he's going to run you guys through the app and how it uh, how it works. He's the pretty face you guys have been seeing in the commercials there. Um, if you have any questions, uh, once again, uh, feel free to click the chat uh, icon at the bottom, uh, punch in your questions there. Uh, I will take note and make sure that, uh, that we wrap back around to them uh, at the end. But if you can hold on to them, uh, please do that. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll have about 15 minutes there at the end uh, to, to go over everything. So without further ado, here is Javier. Hi everyone. Uh, hey Bill, <laughs> nice to see your face. Um, I hope you guys are staying safe at home or at the office or stay safe at the field. I know that we all have to go back to work. That's the reality. So we're going to do this. Uh, let me share my screen so you guys can see. Yeah, this one. All right. And I'm going to drag this out of the way. All right. So today we're going to be talking about Clip ITC app. And just as a reminder, Clip ITC is an interface that your crew leader will be able to use on the field. Uh, a lot of you guys have come from Clip XC, uh, where you maybe were using Clip uh, to go. Now you move to ITC or you come straightly to Clip ITC, which is in the cloud. And uh, the Clip ITC app is what you're going to be looking for on your app store. Remember, you can find it for iOS devices, aka Apple or an iPhone. And you can find it as well for Android devices. So those are the two platforms that we are working with. And just go to your app store, clip and type in clip ITC all together, no space, and you will be able to find the, the app. I'm going to give a step back and first talk about, I'm going to, mention and talk about the the users. I know there's a lot of questions about how to set up the users uh, for the field. What permissions do I want to give them versus uh, staff in the office, right? So I'm going to give a, the example of each of those. The first one is going to be office staff, just so we can do a quick comparison. I'm going to select myself. And you can see right away that I have full permissions. Of course, we can go over all of those, uh, but not, we're not here today to go over the permissions of our, uh, staff in the office. We're here to talk about permissions for crew leaders. So I'm gonna close this and go to one of my crew leaders users. And as you can see and notice the difference is that none of the permissions set available for them except the last three permissions. And I'm gonna talk about global permission as its own. Um, I'm gonna expand this so you can see we have the mobile app permissions and inside there we have different permissions that they actually very straightforward what they are for. We see a permission to for the crew leader to explore what other crew leaders uh, have on their work bank or they, they can see on their app. Uh, we have other permission to add or edit crew members. We, this is this is okay if you are giving them the permit, the the trust to say, oh, this crew member come at this day or at this time of the day, I'm gonna add it to my crew. Or we just got uh, integrated from another crew. They just came to help us with a big job, so I'm gonna add them to my crew so we can record the times. Uh, then we have managed work. Will allow you to do different things. It will allow you to move things around inside your crew uh, and play with different settings that I'm going to show you on the app. Customer contact information. This is if you want your crew leaders to see the customer contact information, make sure you select this. This is helpful if you have customers that like uh, 30 minutes notice because they need to maybe unlock the gate uh, or you want to let them know right after you finish the job, you want your crew leader to text them and say, hey, we just finished the job. They can use their own device to text. Um, 
this is something that is optional. They will be able to see email as well. So phone number, email, and of course they can see the address because that's part of the job. Um, view to do's is if this crew leader has um, functions uh, as, as crew manager maybe, and you communicate with him through the to-do section of the software. Remember the to-do section is that CRM factor that we are really good at, uh, where you can record the, send, uh, the essence of each conversation between office staff to customer or vice versa, or between office staff in general, or now we can integrate it with crew leaders. So if you wanna send something to the crew leader and say, hey, remember uh, to visit this week, this customer, um, you can do that there. You can put a due date and it will appear on their device at the right time. And they will be able to reply the same way. Um, the view daily work, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's, it actually shows the jobs for the crew to, to be watching. That's completely necessary if you want them to use the app. Uh, users add edit user permission that's required as well. So they can click on, I forgot their password. If, if they don't have that option, they will not be able to do that. And the very last one, uh, and this is what I wanted to talk separately. The very last, last one is just one separate permission because with this one, the crew leaders will be able to see the price of the job uh, and the material charge of each job they're doing. Not a lot of companies um, do this. There are some companies that they don't care if the crew leader are looking at the price that they are charging to the customer, but some other companies defer on that opinion. They, they don't want to show and put ideas on their employee's head. So that one is if you want to show them the material price and the price of the job, make sure you check that one. If not, just make sure you don't check it. I'm gonna save it like that. I'm gonna close this. And we're back in our user tab. Let me bring on my cell phone screen. So this is a screen emulator for an Android device. And you can see I was talking about where you can find the app. So we have Clip ITC. I type it in and we see the first option is like a dark background. Uh, it's supposed to be like gray. Uh, it, I don't know what color you guys perceive it. I don't know the quality of my screen, but you see it there, Clip ITC. You can open it and I already have it installed, but you can install it. And after that, you can open it and log in with the user and password that you have choose for that user uh, name. So once you open it, I'm gonna go to that. You will be able to see it this way. Let me see if I can enlarge this a little bit more. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start on the settings. I think this is a good place to understand some of the tools and then we'll move on into the daily uh, job to job task. So the first setting is we have the daily work settings and we, we see the first setting is show scheduled jobs. So here you can choose what jobs that they're scheduled for what days you wanna see. So we can see everything that is scheduled for my crew. You can see um, only this week, today's work, tomorrow's work or pick a date. I wanna take a moment here because this is one of the top five questions that we have is what happened to the jobs that I didn't finish yesterday? Where are they? I cannot find them. Well, they are in yesterday's date. Nobody has moved them. So if you want to see them, you have two options is to have this week's work all scheduled or the very last one is pick a date. In this case, if you want to pick a date, it will display one calendar and you can say, okay, show me the jobs that they're do or buy, and you can say yesterday. Click OK, and you will be able to see the jobs that they're still on yesterday route that we didn't finish. Um, I love the idea of having today's work 
only because it actually shows and reflects all the work that you've been doing in the office about selecting what day you will be visiting what customers um, and keep track of that efficiency of the employees, the routes and all that. Uh, but there's a very common option to for the crews to have all schedule. That means that they can see everything that is on the work bank under their crew, they will be able to see it. So it's up to you what you want to uh, tell your crews to choose. I definitely recommend uh, today's work. That way they can see the jobs that they have for today. If they finish, you can, of course, they can uh, notify you or you can tell them if you finish, go ahead and choose tomorrow's work so you can get ahead of the week a little bit just in case you have a rain or something. Uh, but it's going to be up to you what you want to choose there. Show completed jobs is an option that it will allow you to see the jobs that you had completed throughout the day and you will be able to see them all the way in the bottom and they will be selected in red on your daily list. I'll show you how that looks. I'm going to leave it on so we can see how that looks after recording a few times. And then you have crew. Crew is where you're going to be able to select what crew number are you working today. So this is one of those things that each company that we see set up differently. We have companies that have the same crew for mowing, but each day of the week has its own crew number. Uh, then we have companies that have uh, one crew and it doesn't move throughout the week, throughout the month. Then we have other companies that use crews as individual um, crew members. So it's going to be up to you how you want to set it up. But here's where your crew leader is going to be able to say, okay, today I'm going to be working in crew number one, two, or any of these cases. I'm going to choose today crew number one. If you, if you have the permission to see other crews, well, then as easy as go to crew number two and see what they're doing today, what jobs they have, and how fast are they on their route. In this case, like I say, crew number one is going to be my example. Then we pass to the next area, which is crew and employees. Crew one employees. And we see Javier Elizalde, that's me. I'm the crew leader today. But you know what? We have other crew member that did not show up today. So I got two options here. I can just click and remove. And then I can click on employees add employee and I can add the employees that did came today. So I can select one, I can select another employee and it's very easy to manage. At any point you can name any of these crew leaders if you want to, or um, just so it will be a racer who was a foreman or who was in charge of that job or that day. Then the next section we went to the interest about get work. Uh, this is going to be under the permission of manage uh, work for that employee. And this will allow them out of populate the work for them. You don't have to uh, go to daily, get work and say, show me the work for next week. They will be able to say Monday morning or that day if they want to click on get work and choose what day. So any jobs that they're do or buy, whatever day they choose, they will populate it on the work bank for them. So this is a bypass. Uh, we are trying to give your crew leaders a lot more capabilities. Of course, you can control those with the permissions, but there's there has been a lot of uh, needs right now in the market for capable crew leaders that you are trusting them more and more with some of these tasks. Like, well, you're in charge of mowing, you can organize the schedule and all that. You can do that right there. Get work, that's what it is for. It's just the same screen that you have on, on clipitc.com. Get work, uh, it works the same. Optimize route, it will allow you to optimize the route based on your location or, a, or you can actually change. Uh, you, you have the starting location always is the shop, but you can change that by saying optimize and starting location, you can say my location. So it will record where you're located. It will optimize or rearrange the route throughout the day if you want to do it a few times. 
And of course, sorry, of course you can drag and drop to reorganize manually. You can just click on one of those jobs, drag and drop, or you can do that with your finger. That's why you see right here, the, this simulates your finger. After you change or modify the schedule, you can save it. Go back. Reload route. So reload route is designed for snow removal. There has been occasions, as you know, that when you're doing mo uh, snow plowing, when you finish the last customer for the day, you need to go back to do the first house again because it keeps snowing during the day. So you're gonna finalize the jobs that you did and you can do it here on the field, we'll, go, we'll cover that. But then you can say reload check jobs. So here it will see, you will be able to see what jobs you have done and finalize. And then you can check the boxes and say reload. And then you can go ahead and do them again and of course, all the information about times, employees, materials will be recorded again as a different visit because you're, uh, you're visiting twice. Finalize job. Well, we're giving your crew leader, if you allow them with the permission of managed work, they will have the option to say, all these jobs that I did today, I'm going to be able to finalize them. And we can come back as soon as we... Uh, after we record a few times, we can come back here just to show you how they look. But that's that's the option. Uh, we see a lot of, actually a lot of companies that I like this option. They trust their crew leaders and they say, just finalize at the end of the day. You don't have to, I don't have to supervise anymore. You've been doing a, a really good job with the app for the last couple of months. So just go ahead and do it. And that way in your office, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You can focus on the next schedule and and, at the invoice or billing part at the end of the month. Weather options. This is one of my favorite things about the new app um, that you can automate now the weather conditions by just turning it on. Every time that you do a job, the weather conditions will be recorded and we'll pull that from Dark Sky API, which is a really good website. I don't know if you have uh, used it on your computer or your cell phone. I love, it's very accurate. And every time that you're going to be doing a job, it will record the actual weather conditions of the job. No longer you need to have your guys tell, remember if it was mowing, if, if it was rainy, or if if the house was like had like frost. All that is going to be there. Uh, you can add the long conditions here. Manually, if you want to, for the day, you can say everything is wet because it has rained for the last four days. So you can go ahead and add a long condition. If you don't want to do it automatically, if you want your cruise to still record it, just make sure you turn it off. And that way you, you can have your cruise record one by one manually uh, on the app. They can record the weather conditions in each job. Material report. This is something that uh, I really like. It will allow them to see in reference to how much uh, the work that they're seeing for the day or the week, whatever they have choose here. So in reference to that, they will be able to see what materials they're gonna use. In this case, we have today's work only. So we are seeing that all the materials that we'll be using for today. All right, we see uh, 10 yards of brown mulch and we have one that is called subcontractor. That means that it's a job that I subcontract to another company. I have set up a material like that. Show complete to-dos. It's very self-explanatory. We have the to-do section we'll cover in a minute, but it will be, you will be able to see what to-dos you have done and complete in the past. Then we have language. As you know, there's a big need of uh, Spanish um, speaking workers on the field and they do a really good job. So we have now developed the option of translating the whole app. So when you click on Spanish, it's gonna take you out of the, of the app and you're gonna have to log in again, but 
everything will be in Spanish now. All the tools will be in Spanish, all the menus. So it's going to be easier for them to adapt to this new app if you put it on their mother language. And you have the option of sing out. If you want to do that, you can sing out. And maybe you that device is going to be passed around to other crews that will be able to sign up with the right login information. The to-dos, like I said before, is going to be that interaction between office staff and that crew leader. Uh, that they will be able to see here or that user. It doesn't have to be a crew leader, but if that user is logging into a Clip ITC uh, app, they will be able to see all the to-dos and the ones that they have uh, done. You have a filter of today because that's a range. And we see here, they can click on one of the to-dos. Well, this one is in Spanish. Let me put one in English. Okay. So there's a communication there. It says customer needs fertilizing. So your crew leader can uh, reply. They can go ahead and do the job if, if they want to. You see the details and you see the contact of the customer is here as well. So this part is quite easy. Uh, you see in red the ones that is, is completed. So it's very easy to, to notice what is uh what we have not done for the rest of the day. Time clock. A lot of you guys use this. A lot of you guys don't use this. I like it. Uh, you can see and stamp what time do your crew uh, leader came. What time your, your crew leader came, you can punch in yourself. You can punch in the rest of the crew members. In this case, we have two other crew members, so we can select one of them, clock in, select the other one, clock in, and me as crew leader, I'm going to clock in. And at the end of the day, I'm going to clock out once I arrive to the shop. That way, all my times of work, they will be inside my uh, work time during the day. And we come to the, to the uh, tab that we spend a lot of time when we're on the field, which is your daily list of jobs. We see we have the customers arranged in the same order that you have arranged on your routing in clipitc.com. So this order is from top to bottom. You're, of course, they can go ahead and click a random job, but the idea is for you, and it's a very logic step, is starting the top, and work your way to the bottom during the day. So we're going to go to the first customer. We see we have some details here. We have some notes. It says, please pull the big weeds, spray the little ones, trim the bushes if necessary. So this is a garden maintenance. It looks like that. Um, so here, you can go ahead and add a note if you need to. You can click on start group, map, and more. And we're going to go to all of those options. If I edit notes, I'll be able to edit even this note. If I click on add general note, I will be responding to that note that I have from the office or adding something to them and saying, um, did for All right. Did fertilizing but no weeds. I'm going to save this. And that way the office will know that I did not did any pulling weeds or spraying. I just did fertilizing. All right. So that communication will go all the way to the office. You will be able to see it there or your supervisor will be able to see it there. So once I'm ready to start the job, you click on start. And you can go ahead and do the job. If you finish the job, you click on end. If you need to pause the job, you click on pause. That means that you need to take a break. You're going to the gas station. Uh, the job was a very large job, so you're coming the next day to finish. Uh, there's a bunch of different reasons why to stop or pause the job. Uh, maybe the customer came out to talk, and, well, you feel that you have to pause the job because you're not actually working the actual job. Once you're ready to resume, resume you can click on Start again, and you can continue. 
And once you finish the job, very easy, you click on end. All right, so now we, we finish the job and we can go to the next one, All right? So that customer, I finished, it disappeared from my list. It went all the way to the bottom and now it's on red because it's a customer that I already finished. Go to the next one. If you don't know how to get there, well, you have the little car here that will open and link to your map service that you have on your cell phone, either Google Map or Maps from iPhone. And it will work well and you will be able to get to that property, the, you know, the fastest route, despite traffic, whatever settings you have on your maps. All right. What happened when you have neighbors? That's a very good question, very commonly. Uh, well, you can group the houses. If your crew members and your crew leaders say, instead of mowing one house at the time, we're going to grab the mower and I'm going to mow the five houses and then the guy with the trimmer is going to trim the five houses and then the blower is going to come after us blowing everything. So we're going to group those houses together by clicking on group and selecting what jobs or what customers I'm grouping together. All right, I'm gonna save. And now all those houses are grouped together. I can go ahead and start. And at any time, I can go ahead and finish. And now all those houses that I group together, they're gonna be marked as done, visit, and disappear from my list. All right, next house you go, you do the same, you click on the map, you get there, you can click on more, and you can do different things here. You can skip jobs, and when you click on skip jobs, you will be able to choose when is the next visit. The most commonly one is seven days. You can add materials. You can click on add materials and you will be able to access your list of, the list of the materials that your office had set up under customize tab. You have edit employee times, which will allow you to, after you finish the job, will allow you to edit the employee times. If you say, no, I forgot to, clock out during the job uh, and we went and had lunch, you can go ahead and do that. Change crew, uh, it will allow you to move this house to a different crew. Instead of uh, this customer being in my crew, I'm gonna move it. So I'm gonna say ch change crew and I'm gonna say move it to crew number two. And I'm gonna save that. And just like that, that customer, it gets moved to the next crew. Other options you have here is additional charge. When you're charging an extra fee to the customer, very common to when you're picking up um, or when you're taking with you all the trash or the leaves or whatever, even, even random trash in the property that sometimes they ask you to pick it up. You can just say additional charge and you can actually add, an, add a new additional charge for this customer and it will be placed as a sub item during the invoice. And at the end, you have add job. This will allow you to see any other job that this customer has on their profile, on their settings. This customer, for example, has all the red ones, their jobs on hold, customers that you have done a job in the past and it will stay there. You can come here and say, add this job and you can choose it. You can choose an active job as well and say, while I was mowing, I did also leaf cleanup or boost trimming because the customer came out and asked me. So you can go ahead and do that and record the time for that job. You can leave it for the office to set up the price or you can set up a price on a note there. So those are the options that we see there. You have the details. It will show you the details of the customer. And you see we have name, address, the job. You can add pictures. This connect, uh, will connect it to your camera on your cell phone or tablet. And you will be able to add the pictures or add from your gallery. 
conditions. Of course, we know it's weather condition, or we can add the long condition. In this case, we have the automated weather condition, so I don't have to worry about this. So I'm going to just go back. And then signature. A lot of people ask me what the signature is for, is when you're doing a job and the customer uh, sometimes forgets when you did that job or even an additional cost, uh, service or charge, you can, after you have talked to the customer on the field and you have given them a price, you can say, well, I'll do the job right now if you want to, but please sign in um, just to make sure you understand that I will charge you that additionally to the job. So customer will be able to put their name, signature. Uh, also, this is common on commercial accounts where you need to actually get a signature maybe from uh, someone from maintenance. Every time that you go do, do the job, maybe someone in the admin, office administration of the business you are uh, serving. This is very helpful. The signature will be registered in the history of that service and that customer. So, And the last one, we have the contact. We have where and know where the address is, but we have here phone, cell phone, and home, and also any emails register under this customer that will be here. So that's pretty much all the components. You see on red are, are the, the jobs that we already finished. I'm gonna finish a couple more really quick just so we can see how that is going to be changing. And I want to show you an example of finalizing the jobs. So I'm going to click on finalize jobs. And they're going to ask me, if I'm going to finalize any jobs that is done. I'm going to say yes, finalize jobs. And if I go to reload route, I'll be able to see all those jobs that they're right there. I can select them or the ones that I just wanna reload, and I can say, reload check jobs. So that's the last part that we're missing. Now those jobs are again on my list of jobs to visit for the day, so I can start all over again my list. So that's pretty much Clip ITC app. And now I think we'll have time to go over any of your questions. I'm gonna check if the questions are gonna, if you guys wrote anything on the chat, let me open it really quick. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything in the chat yet, um, but if you guys do have questions, feel free to chat them. Uh, or like I said, um, you know, with, with a group this small, we can unmute and just have a conversation if you'd like. So you guys can unmute yourself. And if you had any questions, you can go ahead and ask it and we'll be able to find the answer together. All right. Um, uh, one of the questions that I've got would be, if you pause a job because it's uh, raining and can you then go and start another job while that job's paused? Yes. Yes, uh, there's, that's a very good question, uh, by the way. If you start a job, you cannot start another job while that job is on course, of course. You cannot be in two places at the same time. Uh, if you are, come and work for us. I got plenty of work in my office, but um, you will have to, to, in order to start another job, you will have to pause that and then go ahead and start the other one. Okay, and then another question. We've been having two issues. If if one of my um, crew leaders skips a job, should we, when you, when you skip the job and say the client tells us that um, they need us to come back the next day, should we just automatically then put in there to schedule that for tomorrow? or should we leave it on that day and then the next day that they pull up yesterday's work before they start that day's work? Which yeah. is, is there one way that's better than the other way? I think, I think using the tools of skipping, it's better just because it's gonna be recorded in the history that that visit was skipped and scheduled for the next day. 
So to go ahead and move it to the next day. Correct. I will, now, that, I will suggest that just for the record. Okay. Uh, that's what I've been trying to get my employees to do. Um, it's been a little bit of an issue. And the other, the other issue that has come up is there's been situations where they've skipped the job. Um, and because they didn't do that correctly, um, they remembered the next day that they still needed to move to do that job, but they couldn't find the job. So they went ahead and mowed it and we at least got the job done. But then because they never finalized that part of it, the next week, that job was no longer in the work, work bank. It didn't automatically reschedule itself. Okay. So I can, I can tell you that the only reason of why a, a crew leader will not, is not able to find a job in the app okay. is because he's not under the right date range. So remember, always tell your crew leader, well, if you don't see the job that you need to finalize today or that you need to go and visit today, just go to the right date. And if you move it from an, to another day, you can even click on all schedule and make sure you can actually see it, find it, and go ahead and visit that customer, and then go back to your settings, change it, and continue your normal route. Does that make sense? Yes. That's because then what they could do would be pull up the all scheduled, find that client, click on them, to go ahead and start that job, end that job, and then go back to today's work. Correct. Correct. Uh, that is very common. It is not complicated, but it is very common that um, both office staff and crew leaders get confused about why they cannot find the job. I put it there. I know it's there. Or I can see it on, on the office, but I don't. the crews say that they cannot find it. Everything it goes back to when is the job schedule and what settings they have on their app. Okay, thank you. All right, and uh, Brenda has a question. Uh, is there anything in the works as far as adding to the app to allow a crew leader to add a customer to his route? That's a very good question, and it is coming up. Uh, development is currently working on those areas. Yes, uh, the crew leader will be able to navigate your customer database in the future with the right permission. Um, and add it to the work bank or even add a job to that customer uh, or a even a new lead. That's that's where we're heading as Clip ITC app. And we're really happy about that. Uh, they're still working on the development in that section. So just bear with us. We'll have a very nice, very easy to use app for your crew leaders. All right, uh, Steve has a question. Uh, when logging into the mobile app, is there a way to save users' emails and passwords? So that's a very good question. And if you're using an Android, you shouldn't have any trouble with that. We have seen that there's an issue with some iOS devices, iPhones, uh, where neither the username or the password is being saved and auto-populate every time that you just click on the app. Uh, we are currently working both development and customer support to track why it's only a few devices that they're presenting that. And, and, and as soon as we identify that problem, we'll be able to uh, make an update and you, you're not going to even notice, but it will be fixed. I apologize if that's your case, if you're experiencing those difficulties. Steve's saying he's got an iPhone 7. Uh, yep. So if you want to add that to your notes, that, yep. that may be part I will pass it to them. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do we have any other questions? Uh, Javier's email is Javi E J A V I E at clip.com. Mine is Bill S at clip.com. If you guys need anything, reach out, please. And of course, you can always uh, get a hold of the support team with the um, chat bubble at the bottom of this page on clipitc.com or reaching out to them via support at clip.com. Uh, well, thanks, guys, uh, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. <laughs>